Cross it! Hey everybody, Dr. O here. I want to welcome you to Anatomy and Physiology. Now this is clearly not the first video I've made, but if you're if you're watching them in order, this will be the first one that you watch. So the first thing I want to say before we dive into Anatomy and Physiology is that one of the things that makes this class complicated is that we are not speaking English, right? We are speaking a combination of Greek and Latin because a lot of these terms come from 1500 years ago when they first started studying the human form and how the human body works, okay? Um, now this is not to confuse you. The language that is used is actually very descriptive and very helpful. Let me give you a couple of examples. My favorite example has always been the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Now that sounds like complete gibberish until you understand the medical terminology behind it. Sterno means sternum, clido means clavicle, and mastoid is the mastoid process of your temporal bone. So the sternocleidomastoid muscle tells you exactly where it starts and where it ends. Um, other examples like uh, gluconeogenesis, another one that sounds really difficult, but gluco means glucose, neo means new, and genesis means creation. So whenever your body creates glucose, it undergoes a process called gluconeogenesis. So it's not, it's not critical that you've taken medical terminology before, but it's certainly helpful. If you haven't, I, I always try to teach you what the words mean when, you, when, you, when we come across them for the first time. And also I do have an older series of medical terminology videos that would be quite helpful for you. Okay, so I just put a, I just put a, a, a fun image on here, but we're going to go ahead and dive in and look at what anatomy is versus physiology by looking at this car. There's another fun image that I found. So anatomy, the word means uh, a cutting open. So anatomy is the study of structure. Physiology is the study of function. And it's very important to understand that the two are closely connected. So one thing you're going to hear me say all the time is structure determines function. Form determines function. So an anatomist would look at this car and they would care about the individual pieces, their measurements, how they're put together, right? Like the size of those tires, the, uh, maybe the pressure in those tires, um, the, the structure of the engine. Whereas a physiologist would look at the same car and they want to know how it performs. What does it do? How does it turn? How quickly does it stop? How many horses? horsepower in those engine in that engine how much weight can it carry these kind of things so anatomy is looking at the structure of something physiology is the function so just another quick example like the hepatocyte hepatocytes are liver cells so an anatomist cares about the ingredients the pieces that make that liver cell a physiologist wants to know what a liver cell does so we'll you will learn hundreds of examples with me um, throughout this course so just remember structure determines function these two things always work together personally I don't like classes that separate anatomy and physiology. I, I like the way that we do it with an ANP1 and an ANP2 where you cover anatomy and physiology together because of this reason. reason. It's, let me show you another example. So here we see a hand. I always like to talk to students about the hand. Uh, obviously, I, I spend a lot of time studying biomechanics, but uh, I have a book. I have a, tech, I have a book that's the same size as the textbook in this class called Biomechanics of the Hand, just to show you that this is an introductory level course. So there's so much more to learn. Um, I generally, I spent a year learning what, we, what I teach you in a week. That's how, that's how deep you can dive. So I cannot teach you everything, but we'll, I'll definitely set a foundation for you. Another reason I like the hand is because it is so amazing, right? When you look at humans, Humans, and what makes us special, I, I would argue that the two things that make us special are our huge frontal lobe and our opposable thumb, right? The, the, our hands. So in a, if you're looking at just the structure of the hand, you might not understand anything about this unless, until you realize what it does. So it has a beautiful form, a beautiful structure, but, it's be, but that structure is so important because of what it allows the hand to do. So the fact that I can do this doesn't seem like that big of a deal, but it's a huge deal because it means that I can, I can text, right? Or I can play video games. I could hold tools, these kind of things. So this, this, uh, our opposable thumbs, the function of this hand has given humans a huge advantage on this planet. So that's, that's why structure and function are, are intimately connected and need to be. Okay. So that's just a quick, quick introduction to what the words anatomy and physiology mean, the terminology we're going to be using throughout, throughout this course. And uh, we'll just go ahead and keep diving in. I hope this helped. Have a wonderful day. Be blessed.